Okay. Okay, so we're back at, uh, this is actually time four that we've worked with Naomi here. Um, I actually rode with her for just a, a few minutes yesterday, just got off from her back and just did some walking around. We weren't in a position to film at the time, but I wanted to go ahead and do it. Uh, we're going to take you through exactly what I did yesterday. Uh, maybe just a little bit more than I did yesterday, because yesterday went really, really well and relaxed, so we might progress a little farther today. Uh, we're going to start out as usual with just a little bit of the in-hand work that we've done in the previous sessions, just to refresh and tune up some things, and then we'll go on from there. Uh, again, there's a little bit of delay between my voice and the video. We were kind of jury-rigging this up for you guys, but um, hopefully it should come pretty accurately for you. Okay, so in this, uh, in this groundwork, um, the, really the only things I'm going to be looking for is just nice and relaxed, uh, wanting to go forward but not quickly, not panicking, uh, that we're not afraid of the forward movement at the same time, and um, just on the circle and working with the shoulders because that will be the two most important things that I need when I get up there uh, at the moment. <clears throat> So, of course, in the beginning, we're looking for her to be immobile, not moving. And then with the touch of the whip on her flank, um, where my leg would be, and then we'd ask for the movement. So we'll wait until she sits still for a moment. And then touch with the whip. She's had a little bit of reaction to the whip, so I'm just going to keep that there on her until she goes forward. Because she reacted to it, we're just going to stop. I'm going to touch again and go forward. That was a lot better reaction, so we'll let her go with that one. The things that I'm looking for right now are just that she's not falling into the circle. Uh, if anything, she's moving just a little bit towards the outside of the circle. Both legs kind of just slightly crossing over themselves. They don't actually fully cross over, but they're not stepping into me. She's stepping out and away from me. Good balance on the circle. I'm also looking that she's not contracting her neck. She's looking to reach out towards the bit, towards my hand, and not uh, shy away from it or push into it. She's just kind of following it. So we're going to ask for a little bit of shoulder movement. Very good. Nice and easy. Brain contact should be nice and light. Good. And ho. We're going to stop and then go forward once she's in mobile. Again, a touch with the whip. Still a little reactive there. That'll get better, though. So these are things that she must accept when I'm riding her. I will ride with the dressage over my hand, and I will actually, though I do this rarely on young ones or ones that are being reschooled, I'm going to wear spurs with her today as well because though I don't need them whatsoever on her, she will need them whatsoever. She does need to accept the fact that they're there. Oh, oh, not yet. No. She continues to rush forward and move before me, so we just rein back a little bit to take that possibility away. Touch with the whip, that's better. Little shoulder movement again on this side. If we remember from the previous sessions, this side is much better than the other side though as you'll see the other side's progressing it's getting better and better but this side is naturally a lot easier for her all around mm -hmm. good progressively the mouth is getting a little happier a little bit less uh uh, tense inside the mouth. The news band is intentionally very loose. I want her to have the freedom to move her mouth in whatever way she sees fit at times. She'll get quieter and quieter as she goes with that. But right now, it's still just a little bit. Oh, not yet. Touch with the whip. She lifts up a little bit. I'm just going to keep it there. I'm not going after her. I just keep it there. It's important that in those little moments that the whip pressure doesn't go away. If it goes away, then that little pick up her foot and kind of kick out at it, that becomes a reward. That becomes to her thinking that she did the right thing if that whip goes away. So though I didn't increase the pressure, I didn't go after her. It's not necessary right now. Oh. Uh, I made sure that it didn't go away. So there she reacts again. I'm going to ask her to stop. 
I didn't actually touch her. She just reacted to it. Oh. Oh. There, I was able to touch. A little less reaction. We go forward. This side's getting better. It's not nearly as crooked. She still wants to go faster and a little bit less balance on this side, but uh, it's slowing down. It's relaxing. It's not nearly as crooked as it was. She's reaching out towards my hand a lot more on this side. So it's all progressively getting there. We're going to do a little bit of shoulders, not much, just a little bit. That's a lot better than what we left with last time or two times ago. Good. She's staying forward. She's not uh, kind of getting caught up or tensing up in that movement, staying a lot more forward. Who? Bring back. Good. Good. Much better as far as touching with the whip goes. I immediately ask for shoulders. She gets a little speedy. I just keep my hand firm in the direction that I want her to go. There she slows down and relaxes a bit, so I'll let her go back forward, then we'll stop. Nope. Good. Very good. Stay on the circle. Good. Nice and slow. If she starts leaking into me or pushing into me, I'm lifting up with my inside hand to guide the shoulder out. If she drifts too far away from me, the outside rein's pulling down and closing, saying keep the shoulder close. Good. Just a little bit of shoulder here. Very good. Back to the circle. And stop. It's important that she stops and with a relaxed rein, she stays stopped. Good. Okay, we're ready to ride. We haven't taught her the mounting lesson yet, so she doesn't know how to come pick me off of the fence. But she's good enough to where I can just go ahead and hop on. Try to line her up as much as possible. <clears throat> My objectives right now while I'm riding her are twofold. We have forward, relaxed forward, and um, be able to change her balance and her bend without much of a problem or without much of a fight. We worked on a little bit the first time I rode her, just changing the bend with uh, changing the shoulders in the bend as far as the touch of my leg and little touches of my reins go. <clears throat> Especially as an ex-racehorse, balancing is going to be a, a pretty big issue for her, particularly on one side. So uh, I want to make sure it's very, very clear the tools that I'm going to use to help balance her, especially when we start getting into the canter. Those tools need to be very clear and um, nice and relaxed. Oh, yeah, yesterday. Uh, now I know why I wasn't by the fence. Yesterday, we did work on mounting from the ground. Now, especially as a racehorse, mounting can be a pretty big issue. So we wanted to make sure that we could mount while she's in mobile and mount off of the ground and the fence. So just for the sake of you guys seeing what I did yesterday, I'm treating it very much like I did an unbroke horse, the way I taught her to be able to mount from the ground and not move. Now, before I go up and do this, my correction, if she were to move, when I would go to get up on her, if she were to move, my correction would be to uh, just slide off, move her one direction in the circle, move her the other direction in the circle, move her backwards, and then take one step forward 
relax the reins, go hop on again. That's the only correction that I'll use. And I only put as mu uh, just one little ounce more energy into it than she walked off with. So it's very, very non-abrasive. Just one direction, the other direction, backwards, one step forward. But it's important for me, because she's an ex-racehorse, to go ahead and teach her that it's okay to mount off the ground on both sides. Yesterday we did this on both sides, but just so you can see it, this is how I kind of did it. So the same way I would do with a number of course, if this were a number of course that I was working on and I was mounting for the first time, <clears throat> I go ahead and swing my leg in, make sure my leg touches against her body so that uh, I don't want to be able to get up there one day, she spook at something, my leg touches her in a weird place on her shoulder or by her girth or anything like that, pokes into her, and she go ahead and run off. So I make sure it touches her body, I get up halfway, still loose rein, because I'm already up here and she moved off, I'm not going to slide down and correct it. I'm just taking both reins and asking her to stop while I'm up here half seat. And then when she does, relax the reins. I'm going to pet her, make sure I can touch her flank, touch the other side, play with the stirrup on the other side, touch everything, touch her neck, touch her back, touch all this here. Good. Slide on down. Thankfully, we have uh, a nice... DP saddlery, impulse saddle here. It's one of their English models. I use this on her because we make sure we have good fit for, especially in this beginning, and these DP saddles give me a way that I can quickly get a pretty good fit for my horse uh, by adjusting the gullet with the turn key. Makes it easy and nice for the horse. Not to mention, it's a really nice saddle to ride in. So we're using a DP impulse saddle. Again, loose rein up up on her. She starts to move. I'm going to grab one rein, or rather two reins in this context. Just ask her to stop. Touch her on her sides, all that good stuff. Hop on down. Let's come this way, darling. Try to do it one more time, see how she does. Starts to move a little bit, that's okay. Just half seat. Good. There we go again. That's better. She says I'm gonna move off just one step, that's okay. We'll keep doing it till we get a better step. Go again. That's there, oh, we can move off. Good job, just stay right there. And back up. Good, no, 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 no. Just stay right here. Yeah, so that's good enough for now. I'm not gonna make a huge dish out of it. It'll get better as we go along. <clears throat> so I'll hop up. I would do that on both sides normally. I'm going to go ahead and hop up. First, ask her to be immobile for a second. Doesn't have to be too long, but just for a second. <clears throat> Good. Then we're going to get right into it. Two legs to go forward, just squeezing. A little touch with the dressage hip if she doesn't go. Now, she's not necessarily going to know what my legs mean to go forward yet. So I squeeze with my legs and then she knows the dressage it means to go forward. So that's what I use right away. As soon as my legs squeeze, dressage it comes over and says and touches and says, that means go forward. So that's something to keep in mind, especially with an off track horse. They're not necessarily gonna know how to go forward, particularly with your legs very well. Some of them might, most of them won't. All right, so I'm using a good opening hand Upward actions on the bit, just lifting up, open hand, just asking her to bend a little bit to the inside. I am going to get a good amount of flexion, about 45 degrees. If she were to fall in, I would open up with my outside rein and take the shoulders out this way, maybe lift up on my in right side rein here, work on her shoulders, just making sure that she can bend around the circle, not working to go in a particular uh particular circle, 20 meter, anything like that, we're just kind of working. We're going to change the bend, lift up on the other rein, asking the shoulder to come to the right to change the bend. Good. So I'm not going to just say go left when I change the bend to the left. I'm actually going to ask her to move her shoulders in a counter bend movement to change her bend, both to balance her while she's changing her bend so she doesn't fall into the change of the bend. And it works the body, works the counter bends. <clears throat> gets control of the base of the neck and softens the horse to the rein. So the same thing here. I'm working the same balance that I did on the ground in that I want her to be just slightly moving out over her outside shoulder. <clears throat> 
So I'm going to do little touches with my leg right there. I touched with my left leg. She moved away from it because we've already practiced that on the ground. Touch with my leg again. She moves sideways off of it. That's great. Inside hand stays open and lifts if it needs to. We're going to go for another change of bend. <clears throat> As I guide through the middle here. All right, so I'm lifting up my right rein, closing it against her shoulder, opening up my left rein. She pulls on me, I resist. As soon as the shoulders start to move out and she bends, then I release those reins and let her go to the circle that she's bent. For me, it's very important that I don't just pick up a rein and change directions here. We're going to change bend again. Touch with the left leg. She says the spur feels funny. I just keep it there quiet. There the shoulders move out and she changes her bend. My hands drop. The leg comes off and we just work. Nice and relaxed and easy. We're going to change the bend again. Left hand opens. Right hand lifts and closes. My right leg touches. There the shoulders start to come over. I want more. That's a good step and a big relaxation. And then she can come towards the circle. So I'm using the counter bend to change the bend and change the circle. Same thing here. Left leg touches, guiding out towards the right. Change the bend to the left, shoulders to the right. And then I sit to the left into the circle. Good. Gonna do the same thing. Oh, really good that time. Immediately she comes right on over for me. As soon as I lift it up, here she braces a bit, but as soon as I lifted up that right rein, she lifted up her shoulders and went really well. And then once you do this for a little while, oftentimes the horse will have a tendency to want to drift out too much. I have two corrections for that. You can open up the inside rein and guide the horse more of the inside. I'm bracing with my outside rein to make sure she doesn't bend too much. And when she comes back to the circle, like right there, I'll go ahead and release it. The other one is that you can lift up the outside rein on their neck, like a neck rein, and guide the shoulders back over. You're going to change the bend. Good, very good. Changes the bend on a straight line, and then my hands relax. I sit to the inside. We're on our left circle. Here she wants to drift out just slightly, so I'm using my outside rein to guide her shoulder. Say, no, come to the inside. Very good. I'm going to change the bend again. Touch with the right leg. She wants to move her hip into me, so I touch with the right leg. There we go. That's better. Good. Very good. We're going to change the bend again. Good job. Good job. Change the bend on the straight line. She didn't drop in towards the direction of the circle that we're bending towards. Until my seat switches, then she's allowed to go that direction. Good. Very good. Nice and easy. Changing the bend, controlling the balance through the rib cage and the shoulders. Same thing here. Waiting for her. She's bracing against it. There the body goes. The shoulders go. I want a little more. She balks up my leg just a little bit. I just keep my leg there quietly. Everything relaxes. We switch. If she starts to lift her head up, and reverse the neck and come away from the bit. What I'm going to do is lift my inside hand, follow her up there, and then when she gives to that hand and comes back down, I lower it. This is very, very important. The, the thoroughbreds particularly, a lot of breeds, but thoroughbreds particularly, like Arabs and Frisians and a lot of horses that have you know, necks that are, uh, tend to want to flex to begin with, they're going to do two things. They're either going to recoil behind the bit or they're going to lift up above the bit. Both of those are equally bad, and I want to treat them both very, very specifically. In this case, for her, she doesn't want to go behind the bit nearly as much as she wants to go above it. So anytime she goes above the bit, I lift up my hand with her, and then when she gives and starts to go down, the hand releases. Like here she comes above, 
My hand goes up with her. I encourage her forward. Just wait for her and make it uncomfortable up here. And then my hand goes down with her and lets her stretch. Good. Very good. So it's not abrasive. You don't have to make a big deal out of it. But I also want her to know that coming up above the bit is not an option. It's not an option. It doesn't get a release. Good. Very good. We're just going to play just a second here with leg yield. Very good. Because of the tools that we built on the ground, she comes to that pretty naturally. We're going to come through the center, switch the bend. Oh, quite lovely. Really easy for her there. Good. Nice and easy for her there. She came to that bend very, very naturally. My seat switched. She felt it. She started to go towards it, and I just backed it up with where I positioned her shoulders. We're going to try to stay over closer to the rail, then come down the middle line and try for leg yield on this side. Good. Okay, we're going to wait till she's straight. Let her find it. Let her find it. Good, that's better. Good, that's better. Keeping, my Keeping my inside hand open, that's important. Keep the, inside Keep the inside hand open on the leg yield. Don't block the shoulder. Keep it open. Keep it open. Use the leg touch. She's having a little trouble. There she goes. We're going to try that again on the other side just because she had a little trouble with it. Still working the same cue here on the rail until she stops going above the bit and comes back down to me. Again, my inside hand's lifting. Good, that's better. When she gives downwards, my hand lowers with her. We're going to straighten back up and see if we can try for that leg yield again on this side. This was her easier side on the ground. Okay, she's going for it, but I don't want it yet, so we're just going to say two legs go forward, straighten back up. Okay, now we're going to try again. You're going to ask for it this time. No? Over here, she's searching. Step forward. Good. This is much better. Inside hand stays open. Guiding the shoulders with my outside ring. Guiding the rib cage and the body with my inside leg. Weights in my outside stirrup. Much better here. Good. I'm going to go ahead and relax both of those aids. And let her just reach out. Good. Okay, we're going to do a couple stops, rain back, and then go forward. Stop, rain back. Stay straight over here, though. I don't want this many steps in rain back. I'm just straightening her up. Just get her straightened back up. Right on the rail here. Just stop for a second. Same thing, if she bulks too much, just guiding her back over, touching with the left leg, pushing the ribcage back over, then we're going to halt. Again, just blocking her. They don't come off the rail, stay over here. She says, that's terribly confusing, we've been moving around the whole time. Good. Good, just wait. It's important right now in these moments that you be tactful. Guiding her to that spot. She's confused. She doesn't quite know what I want. So we're just doing little guiding touches. Good job. Encouragement. Good. Still not perfectly immobile yet, but little encouragement says she's on the right track. For her, the idea of standing still under saddle is a foreign one, so... Make sure this is very clear. This is a good thing. Plenty of time, 
plenty of times where I give the reins completely. I don't want to hold her here. I want to be able to give the reins up to her. idea because it's difficult. Good job. problem with pee off. Easy there. Good. Good job. So I'm just going to give that to her and let her move. She's starting to get pretty tense under there, so we're just going to let her move and start working that out. So that was extremely difficult. So we're going to go back to the circles. A little smaller circles this time. So concentrating more on being able to control the outside shoulder to move inside rather than outside away hey, from love. me. Hey, love. Hang on. Back on. <clears throat> okay, so we were just working on some smaller circles. And because we were off the track, which might be easier for Hunter to understand to, to stand still, to stop and stand still, we went and had an aspirate and got a good reaction. So we're going to go back to that for just a moment. Good. Good. Go forward. We're going to do a couple of those off the track. More here towards the middle. Might be more clear for her. Oh. Good. Has to go forward. Two legs. Good job. A little bit, uh, Easier for her to understand the legs that time, didn't need the whip. We're going to go over to the actual track and ask her to stop. We had some trouble with that on the other side. We'll try here. Good. Good. Okay. So two legs go forward, touch with the whip. She started to bulk at the leg for a second, so we touched with the whip, asked for a stop. Good. Quietly. Every time she's trying to come off of the rail, my inside rein is blocking, my outside rein is opening, take her shoulders back to the rail. The inside leg's just touching a bit, just to provide another mental block that says, no, stay here on the track. Good. Nope. Good job. Good. For whatever reason, out here on the rail, it's harder for her mentally to handle stopping and standing still. It's a lot easier on the inside, apparently. So we're continuing the work, just changing the balance, changing the bend. 
Asking for moments of immobility. Here she gets stuck. I want her to keep here to the left and change her bend to the right. She gets stuck. Just keep the same cue. Stay quiet. My right leg is on. Just touching. It's not bumping. It's not nudging. It's just there to touch. She wants to push into that leg, so there she takes it away, it releases, and then we'll just ask her to stop. She moves it back to the right, my right leg comes back on, as soon as she moves away from that right leg, we'll go ahead and there it goes, releases, and then we'll just ask for a stop again. Ho, ho. There you go. Good job. And forward. And forward. As soon as she steps forward, she steps into that right leg, so the right leg touches. It says bend away from that leg. Move your body away from that leg. Good job. Changing the bend to the left. And we're going to immediately change it back to the right. Change it to the left again. And we're going to stay here on the left. Okay, we're going to take her first little steps to trot. Good. She wants to have a little baby trot. That's fine with me in the beginning. I'm sure she'll go forward more soon. Things I'm looking for here are just to, I'm not following a specific circle. I'm just working on her balance. If I feel the shoulders drop in, or if I feel the shoulders leak out, correcting each of those. Just adjusting her balance as it goes along. At this point, I'm going to let her take whatever speed trot she's comfortable with. This might, on other horses, might be pretty forward and speedy with a high tempo. That'd be fine. Don't be afraid of the movement. We can fix it more later. Right now, it's just good experience forward. Guiding the balance. Good. Oh, oh, oh. Good job. We're going to switch to the right and do the same thing. Good. That time going forward, she didn't quite press into my right leg as much. Okay, two legs on. Good. Good job. Good job. She's in a, She's in a, for a well, for a moment she was. She was exactly where I wanted her to be for a moment as far as the balance goes. She's just slightly moving out over her outside shoulder. So here she starts to get a little speedy. I'm just going to control where she goes in direction. I'm not going to ask her to slow down. I'm just going to control the balance in the direction. I'm not afraid of her getting a little bit speedy or changing her tempo or changing any of that. Not afraid of the movement. Let her go where her body needs to balance and go. Good, this is much better. Always giving opportunities to make the reins loose. Still maintaining a connection, but reins loose. Very good. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Good. Oh, go again, left side. Two legs. See as she goes forward, she pushes to the left, so I just correct that for a second. I want her to go off straight. Good. Here she lifts up her head, so I'm just going to lift up my hands. Put a little bit of pressure on the corners of the lips with that hand lifting up. Then as she comes down, the hand will lower with her. Good. Good job. Same thing here. Still guiding the balance as I do that. Got to stay forward. There you go. Good. Good. Nice job. There you go. Just looking to ride her out over her outside shoulder. 
here she gets a little above the bit again so that hand comes up to faster come back down she's a little bit high in general here in the trot i'm not worried about it there she goes good it's working a little too much sideways for me at the moment but i'm just going to leave it alone let the reins loose and encourage her forward good there you go there you go nice job Easy. There you go. See? Okay, we're going to change the bend. Yep, shoulders move out just a little bit. She said that was difficult. As soon as she sets into the groove, just ride quiet. Nice, easy contact. Anything that she wants to stretch forward is fine. Here she falls in, so I'm lifting up, pushing a little with my leg. Just saying, no, keep on out here, but not quite that much. She went from diving in to leaking out. We want a heavy medium. This is better. We're going to change the bend again. I'm starting to lift on my left rein, touch with my left leg. There you go. Good job. Good, Naomi. Good job. Encouraging her forward with my inside leg as I lift up on the rein. She started to get a little bit hollow, a little bit going away from the bit rather than out towards it. So we're correcting that here. That's better. No. Better for a second. There we go. That's even better. I want her to think long and stretch right now. This is not only about a relationship with my hand, that's the primary goal, is the relationship with my hand says you're allowed to go long and out, but it's also for her body and her back, but principally for the relationship with the hand right now. I don't want her to recoil away from the pressure. I want her to think about going out towards my hand and following it. The same here. Good. She's going to play with this a bit more. She's kind of going back and forth. There you go. When she finds that spot, just riding quiet. My seat is even just a little bit lighter on her. I'm barely going down into the saddle, supporting myself as much as possible. We're going to change the bend here. Very good. Nice and easy. Easily done. She leaks out a little bit, so my inside hand opens up. My outside rein closes. So she comes back towards the line that I'm thinking about. Really a pleasant horse all around. She thinks hard, she works hard. She gets a little nervous about some things, but her nervous is very easily handled. Quite lovely. All right, we're gonna try to play with going around the outside of the arena. Oh, she says those poles are scary. Lift up on the inside rein to keep the shoulder touching with the right leg. Saying stay over by the rail. There you go. Good. Anytime that she's bracing or she's going up above the bit, like here, my hands are just slightly elevated. Putting the pressure on. And then giving when she goes out to the hand. Inside legs touching just to keep the barrel on the track as she's bending. Good. We're riding on the track here, thinking a little bit about a shoulder four and a little shoulder in. I want her to move kind of in that balance easy the whole time. Nothing perfectly straight. Good. All right, we're going to make a circle. Good. Or half a circle. Easy, 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 easy. 
Good job. Nice and easy. Hopeful. There you go. Much better. Continue thinking about going forward. Good job. Think forward. Think forward. There you go. I know. It's a tough life. It's a hard knock life for us. Yeah. Just playing again a little bit with how she's interacting with the bit and how her body's working as we're on the track here. Just in a slight thinking shoulder in mode. Easy, no pulling. Good. Turn to the inside here, the outside shoulder's leaking. Just fix it. And then when it goes forward, we relax. There you go. We're gonna come back more to the inside again, do a few figure of eight. Changing the bend and guiding the body. <laughs> a little just confused here at the moment what she wants to do, so we're just waiting, keeping that inside rein open, trying to guide the shoulders to the inside. She wants to leak out away from the pressure at the moment, so we just guide to the inside till she comes back to it. There you go. Still need a bit more. There you go. I'm gonna change the bend. Good. Small circles in the figure of eight here. Working on her staying to the circle. into the left as we change to the left. <clears throat> as I'm in these smaller circles, I'm making my range just a little bit shoulder, shorter, using two legs, kind of pushing her to my hands just a little bit, just to test to see how she's going to handle the pressure. When she gives and stabilizes, not recoiling, not going above. Then we get lighter and quieter again. Here she's having a little trouble. <clears throat> Good, there we go, and giving. We're gonna change the bend in just a moment. Right here. Push with the leg. Right leg pushes. It's important that she accepts these things. When she raises up with her leg like that, my leg can't go away. It can't release. It just stays there. Doesn't press any harder. Doesn't press any less. Good. Very good. Switch. Good. Now come towards that circle. Good. Nice job. <clears throat> We're going to trot just a bit more. 
good. Change and bend, small circle. Good job. She changed her bend without diving in. Very good, Naomi. And we'll halt. Even here in the halt, the hands are going to lift up till she gives a little downwards with the reins, accepts the contact. We're going to do one more of those. Right to the trot if we can. Good job. Nice job. <clears throat> Good. Change the bend. Doing a little tough there. It's all right. Forward. Good. Nice job. Good girl. We're going to find our way back here to the middle again. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and do another circle because that got a little rough for a second. Good. A little better. Pull. Oh. Much easier. Good job. I'm going to give her a nice loose rein. Let her sit for a second and move around. Good. Okay. I think that'll be good for today on her. Little walk, a little trot. Same idea, control the balance, control the changes of bend without falling in. Uh, a little bit of shoulder for a little work towards the shoulder in to help her balance, help her interaction with my body as we manipulate where the horse should be. Um, good day for her. Fourth ride or fourth lesson for her altogether. She's doing quite nice. <clears throat>